Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Extension Quick Tip Tutorial. This one I'm going to be showing you your sort of basic and best options for file management and basically how you can efficiently store tons of presets or tons of categories of presets easily and the pros and cons between these two different methods. To quickly state these two methods is to bake it in with the signed extension files or to have it in sort of a modular file system which we'll be discussing today. Before we get started though, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel and down in the description you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so at one of our two membership levels as a member or supporter, which helps us out financially as well as gives you perks like uh, loyalty badges, custom emojis, Discord status, and more. And also check out the links below to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to check out some of the other cool stuff I make. All right, so I'm gonna be showing you two examples of two different extensions I've made, which have two totally different file management systems or ways of storing the large amounts of data that can potentially be inside of them. Most of you are familiar with extensions like Motion Bro or Animation Composer, where you have these big packs of elements or lots of folders full of lots of different packs. And essentially what we want to do is find the best way to store these, save the most space for a user, and of course save the most space for when they have to download the file. So the first method we can use to actually sort of uh, manage our files or have them in an easy to access place is to actually package them up with the extension uh, ourselves. What this means is alongside your HTML, all your JavaScript, your CSS, you also have the option of adding say like a PAX or an assets folder and inside of here you can get as complex as you want with all of the PAX categories, presets, whatever you want to call them. You may have ex external PAX uh, sort of hierarchies with sub packs which then have all of your presets. In this case, this particular extension is an interesting case because it's about 10 gigabytes with all of these presets inside of it. But what we've chosen to do with this particular case is to package them up with the extension themselves. That way, everything that is included with the extension gets simply installed in one go. The user doesn't have to worry about installing a separate file or downloading some packs. Everything is easy to use and immediately available once they install the extension. Obviously, some of the pros of this are easy to use, super user friendly, and often for you as a developer, easier to package up as everything is just in one location. Uh, some of the cons though are that this is going to provide you with a huge installer. Even after compression, this can end up being about seven gigabytes of just presets. Another con is that if a user deletes, changes the name or modifies any of these files, it will break the code signing and thus breaking their extension. That will basically make it so that it appears in their um, app, but they can't use it. This could actually be a benefit as well if you want to prevent tampering uh, as basically the entire extension, the folder hierarchy and the names of everything is set to a signed state, which means if it's changed, then the extension will no longer work um, for the basic user. This method I do prefer to use a lot of the time for anything between like zero gigabytes and 10, because everything is again, super easy for you as a programmer, but um, also like just having all the presets in one location saves you a lot of headache for linking files and things like that. But there are other ways we can do things to make managing things a little bit more convenient for users with not as much space, as well as add some modularity. In this example of an upcoming extension I've been working on, there is a more modular way we do this by having a folder in our documents, which is a publicly accessible place. The, the files within here aren't gonna be linked directly to our extension, meaning that if I modify the name or if I move these around, my extension is gonna keep working, but also retain these presets. What this means is that you either need to have a predefined folder in a public place that is the same on all computers, for example, the documents is both on Windows and Mac, so I can easily get access, create this sounds crate folder and store all of my presets in here um, and have the user either place them here or have the user download them and have the extension then grab those files and move them in here. 
this uh, pro wise is going to give your user more modularity, meaning that if you have a huge pack of 10 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes, or even if it's a small pack, this will give them the option to put it on an external drive if they wish. Um, you don't have to necessarily concrete or hard code this singular folder as the one preset folder. You can set it up so they can select their folder and you can remember that as well by storing it in a file. But this allows them to move things around, especially on older computers, allows them to save space and have it on an external drive. And then the extension will only work when they plug in their external drive, which is a pretty cool thing as well. And this will allow them to also, in some cases, if you want, be able to have access to these files outside of your extension, meaning that if they wanna grab these files and not um, have to worry about breaking the extension, they can do that as well with this sort of modular folder setup. And that's really it. Those are the two methods I like to use. The first of which, of course, is packing all of your presets and baking them in with the extension, which gives you a much bigger installer file, but ease of use wise is gonna be the most convenient and cause the least headaches for bugs and user experience. Or you can have sort of a more modular folder in a public uh, folder place and give the user the option to put it wherever they want and have the extension track where that is, which a pro is having modularity of file sizes and being able to put on any drive you want, um, as well as giving the user access to make changes if you want. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates, as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member in our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the link below by becoming a member or a supporter at these two tier levels, which comes with perks for you, like badges, emojis, membership status, live streams, and much more. And also check out the links down below to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some other cool stuff I make. Thanks again for watching everyone. We'll see you next time.